Y'all already know. It's time to grab your boobs and tune into this week's episode of Boob Shenary. It's all about that wop, 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 them wet ass pussies. So tune in, y'all. Let's get it. This episode is brought to you by House of Boobs, where we sell everything boob except your bra. Your one stop shop for all your boob accessories. Be sure to visit us at www.houseofboobs.com. That's H A U S O F B O O B S dot com. If you ever heard, Anchor is the easiest way to create a podcast, especially if you're doing it on your own time with little to no help. It is literally a one stop shop, you I'm telling you, everything you need to make your podcast is in one place. It's, it's free to use. There's creation tools that allow you to record. It allows you to edit right from your phone, right from your Mac, right from your whatever you have, because you know I'm Appled out, so everything's at Apple. Anyways, it allows you to distribute your podcast. Like It'll broadcast it to Spotify for you, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, SoundCloud, right from the app. So all you need to do is hit up anchorfm.com to get started. Download the app because it is available on both platforms. I would definitely, definitely look into download this app. Again, that is anchor, F-M, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started. All right, y'all, let's get back to the show. Intro, intro, introducing, Ow. It's the one and only Boob Blocker Bay, Jay Marie here, bringing Boob Shinary the podcast. Okay. With my sis on the ones and twos with me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, it's KB. I'm in the building. I'm here. I'm ready. Hey. Grab your boob, shake your tits, do all of that. Let's get it. Okay. Boob Shinary. All right, y'all, we're going to kick it off with Vagina Vents, because this week mm. has been a week for me. Work has been kicking my tail. I've been working mm. like 12-hour shifts almost every day, but, you know, I mean, we dig it off one day on time, so, mm. you know, I got to put in the small wins. It's all about perspective, <laughs> putting in the small wins. So that one day I got me a good extra four hours of sleep in. (laughs) (laughs) How you do it, man. Hey, but those small victories win, I'm telling you. Small victories. They get you to the bigger goal, I'm telling you, bro. Okay, baby steps. Some sleep, shoot. Uh, I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record because, hell, I'm still going through this moving shit. But (laughs) Right. (laughs) But it's a process to it. (laughs) <laughs> but now I'm at the phase where, all right, we're we're seconds away from the the finish line. I close, um, not next Monday, but not this upcoming Monday, but the next. So that the end. Of the congrats, I congrats, pop by. Yeah, man. about time. Um, and now I'm at the phase where, well, for me, where I'm cleaning up and I'm um uh, packing and throwing stuff away. So <laughs> first of all, I didn't know I was an emotional hoarder in. That is crazy. Yeah. Like, okay. So the way I figured this out was uh, I have some paperwork from when me and my cousin had an apartment together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I had the papers from when we moved in. So when we signed everything, so oh when we my God. that we were leaving, I had all the papers, all the papers. I'm going to shred that now. <laughs> I did. I did. Um, I also had papers from like a high school letter I wrote to someone and they wrote back. Like this girl, like all kind of stuff. And I'm like, why in the fuck do yeah. I? Because it was what tripped me out about it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I had it. So that means I've just been carrying it from place to place to place. Mm. And and kind of like a, a light bulb and lightning kumbaya come here, you know, right. moment for myself. 
why the fuck am I always just picking up and carrying shit and I don't even have any purpose for it? So as I'm straight, come on, somebody. So when I say a breakthrough this morning, Mm -hmm. oh my God, girl. Look at that. And and I'm like, I don't need this anymore. Why am I holding on to this? I don't even talk to this person anymore. I don't don't deal with this anymore. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck am I dealing with shit in my real life? Like, I just, I... It was such an, an awakening. And who would have thought? Shout out to my shredder. Okay. <laughs> Definitely was therapy for me this morning. But it was just, it was, it was nice. Um, I, I like this energy that I have right now. I like this this moment of peace that I have right now, this recognition that it's okay for me to be happy with where I'm coming from and where I'm about to go. Like I'm in, that. in that moment. Yes, girl. Like hallelujah. Can't wait to sage up this new house. Nothing okay. Pop- and I'm just like, you know, now, if you don't get the address, my nigga, you were one of the bad energies. Like, I just, okay. <laughs> so yeah, just put like, it out there, set the record <laughs> straight. So you know the intention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me <do> this. <laughs> 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 oh, girl. I know that's real, though, but that's major, though. That's major for you yeah. because that shows growth. So shout out to you on your journey. Mm. But we're going to jump straight into this good boob news report because I'm excited today because I want to talk about what Issa Rae is doing now. This is my girl. I've been following her since she um, started putting out Awkward Black Girl on YouTube. <clears throat> but she's producing an HBO documentary on the history of Black television. And yeah. I have been waiting for someone to do this or if not mm-hmm. I was going to try to do it myself because it's so important to our culture and we don't ever see it like well will she be talking about black exploitation um how how deep is she going like what is she exploring do we know yet okay so the article I read by variety mm-hmm. says mm-hmm. that um it's going to be called seen and heard on the mm-hmm. history of Black television from the perspective of those who wrote, produced, created, and starred in series of mm-hmm. the past and present. And oh, the show so is... Go mm-hmm. ahead. No, no, you can. Um, It says the show is going to feature interviews with actors, showrunners, writers, and celebrities sharing their experiences of watching African Americans represented on TV and succeeding mm. in their own creative endeavors. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I love that. So that's a completely different way that I was thinking because I've seen a documentary, a documentary before, um, where they were talking about black exploitation and mm-hmm. how, um, how black images were portrayed in the media, and just you know, basically how black people have been done is just, you know, forever. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> but unfortunately, but um, but yeah, they were talking about how Sydney Poitier, how even um, guess who's coming to dinner? Even in that one, mm-hmm. that movie was so groundbreaking, it was so riveting. Yes. And then now we had it like they ain't even really kiss like that. If you watch that movie, mm-hmm. he kiss her. He still didn't touch her. It was just implied. And I think when they yeah. did, they had on gloves, and it was stuff like that. So I was in this class, uh, black images in the media. And mm-hmm. they would point out certain things like that. So it was like, yeah, it was still groundbreaking. It was still things happening. And that that pushed that that was the the catalyst for for uh to open doors and things of that nature. But there were still so many hidden barriers and so many different things that those actors had to go through that nobody really acknowledged or or even shed light on. So I like exactly. that she brought out, yeah, we had this bad history, but we mm-hmm. took that bad history. And look what the fuck we did with it. Like, exactly. I love that. <laughs> I it's love just that. acknowledging what, what has been looked over because they don't care about. Right. But it's important to us to see it. And somebody needed to put it out there. And I'm so glad it's finally coming to the light. Because there is so much that Black people have done for their own culture that we are not aware of. Mm-mm, not at all. There is so yeah. much. <laughs> it's sad, bro. It is sad. I'm excited. When is it coming out again? Um, they don't have a release date yet. However, it just says it's in the works. So HBO, okay. you know, y'all know. 
Insecure comes on the same channel. So we're going to be in there. When the release does happen, best believe we're going to know. Okay? Yeah, and we will let y'all know. Because I'm, I'm watching it. I'm reviewing it. I'm watching it. I'm promoting oh, it. Because <laughs> I'm excited. Very excited for that. But mm-hmm. um, speaking of Black women and powerful movements, I also okay. wanted to touch on something that's going on a little local and close to home. Mm-hmm. So, if you are in the Winston-Salem, North Carolina area, a very, very close friend of mine um, has started what's called the Phoenix Home for Women. And it's going to be a recovery residence located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The main focus is to help women who are recovering from substance use disorder and become more productive members of society. So she's uh-huh. directly giving back. And this is actually going to be a home. She's she's actually getting things in order now. Um, I'm watching from behind the scenes, so I can attest to that. Um, she's getting things in order now. It's going to be a physical place that you can also go to and get um, counseling. She's going to help literally get you back together and prepare you to be a, I guess, staple in society. It's going to, she's going to provide a safe, no nonsense space for women to heal and grow as they transition into a sober lifestyle. They're going to equip residents with skills and tools needed to help them rebuild their lives, reconnect with loved ones and maintain a sober lifestyle. So that's very, very dope. That is, that's awesome. Yeah, so she's making powerful strides in the community on that. Wow, now, I love that. she does have a website coming. If anybody's interested or knows someone that is in need of help, you can go ahead and reach out. Um, it's the Phoenix Home for Women dot com, or you can hit up their IG um, at the Phoenix Home for Women, and they're also on Facebook under the same name, the Phoenix Home for Women. Nice, so y'all check that out. That's the Phoenix spelled out, right? Uh huh. Everything yeah. spelled out. Yep. Okay. The Phoenix right. home for women. Wow, that's that's beautiful. I love right. to hear, uh, especially local stories, because it's like you hear about uh, Issa Rae doing her thing, and it's like, yay, a celebrity made it. You do the damn thing. Use your platform. But I also love how people use their platforms locally. Like I think sometimes people don't realize. Uh, that you don't have to have 15 million followers to make a difference in your community. You, right. you don't have to be exactly. a well-known household name. You just need to know your neighbor's nope. name. You don't even have to know your neighbor's name to help somebody out. Yep. Like, um, I'm pretty sure there's times that I've done something for someone, a stranger, uh, even if I just paid for their groceries in the, in the line. I didn't, I didn't know that person's name, but I'm pretty sure it made an impact right. in their life. I love yes. to hear how people just take that that initiative to be that difference. So I love that. Shout out to her. Yeah. Shout out to women. Exactly. She's building her legacy. <laughs> I love it. Just, just you got to acknowledge that. Um, that's beautiful. And I love that. Because it's always her. about the bigger yeah, picture. Yeah, legacy. What's your footprint going to be? Mm-hmm. What are you going to leave behind? Exactly. People need to start thinking about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. It'll change a lot of things you do. It'll change your mindset. Because if you start thinking, okay, yes, what will. am I doing? to help my next person or to help leave my carbon, like not my carbon, does that, but <laughs> to leave my footprint, to leave my legacy. Right. What am I doing to accomplish that? What is my bigger goal here? Once you, once you mm-hmm. realize that, or once you think about that, I promise you, you won't do half of the crazy stuff that you're doing. I promise you that nope. most of those crazy thoughts in your head, like, what am I doing? What am I here for? Those will start to disappear on you. It's, it's okay. I like that. <sighs> Indeed. <laughs> you know it's crazy though. I was just sitting here thinking like um about this feminine favor topic mm-hmm. that we jumping into. Mm. With COVID, I know you were reading something about moms who breastfeed with COVID or whatever, and it was just crazy to me yes. that I'm all for the boob movement. Like y'all know, I'm queen of boob. <laughs> However, it never crossed my mind. About a breastfeeding mom. Yeah, yeah. So it's still a developing research. Um, they're still working mm-hmm. the kinks out there. But what happens or what they've found out so far, so the severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, or uh, uh-huh. CLV2 for short, 
that has not been found to be active in breastfeeding okay. in the breast milk. Um, and this was a this was a concern for me <clears throat> um, because I know a lot of women who are who are actively trying to get pregnant, who are pregnant, and who were pregnant before the pandemic started, and were supposed to have uh, well, actually did have their child um, this summer. So I'm mm-hmm. kind of concerned about that because COVID is still is still developing within the cell. So you're still trying to yeah. figure out what's going to happen. Um, what affects what? How does it travel? How do we transfer things? And of course, the most right. delicate transfer of anything in anybody's life, no matter who you are, how you start it off, is between the mother and the child. So I was really concerned. Mm-hmm. Like, so, so if someone caught COVID, how how does that, you know, what would happen to them? Yeah. Especially when it comes to breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is a big thing. That's that's the record. Come on now. But they were seeing that uh, women who have either had cases of COVID or who caught coronavirus um, or who've come in contact with someone who had coronavirus. So far, Mm -hmm. that transfer of breast milk to the child does not, it has no active infection in there at all. So the babies are safe. Mm -hmm. Um, They're definitely Mm -hmm. safe. So, and again, it's still research, but that was good news for me. And I was just like, yay. Like we can breastfeed women. Right. We're good. Our <laughs> is good. Um, I know that they said a lot of the cases that they tested out uh, were women who were who identified themselves as Caucasian. Uh, there were a couple mm-hmm. of other samples, of course, um, but they were saying overall there were no act like in all of them there were no active cases uh, as as far as that's pretty COVID. good though. Yeah, and yeah. there was another case where it wasn't COVID. But it, that woman had something else. Mm-hmm. So it was like one of those, you know, little bad seeds somewhere. But okay. <laughs> we're still, an exception to the rule. <laughs> exactly. And that was actually, um, I read it in the JAMA article, and that was put out or published August 2020. So that is recent. That is recent. Okay. So, okay. But yeah. For the recent current stack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So shout out to that. Um, and shout out to all the new moms and the. And the women who may have been concerned about that, new mommies, mommies yes. out there, women who are breastfeeding. So For moms to be. Of course, still stay safe. Still do all your, all your COVID quarantine, new rituals that we all have. But so far, there's no kids. Don't stop what you're currently doing. Exactly. However. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, shifting the focus just a little bit to kind of hit on what we're going to talk on today mm-hmm. because I've been seeing a lot of talk about wet ass pussies. Oh. However, I've been hearing some stories about some pussies that ain't so wet. Ooh. Well, you know, so, what's a good way to keep it that though? And that's what we're about to tell you today. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this little godly sprinkle of feminine favor today Mm-hmm. We're going to tell you, drink plenty of water. Water is your best friend. Like, even when you don't want to, drink water. Because the the better hydrated you are, mm-hmm. the better it functions down there. I mean, people have to think about it. Like, you are what you eat. You and mm-hmm. what you put into your body. That's what you put out. Do you really think if you eat in oodles and noodles, Kool-Aid, Hennessy, which is alcohol, that drives you up, people. Mm-hmm. You know? Do yes. you really think that out there smoking, again, drive, drives you up? <laughs> Whatever yes. your activities are, those juices that you drink, that sugar, all of that, that that's not good for you, women. Like, that's no. For your pH, it's not good for you, yeah, yeah. And if you want that. At all. <laughs> At all. The wop. And that, you also got to eat your fruits and your vegetables. And I know this sounds like we like a middle school, we talking to a middle schooler and we are like the mom. And, you know, on that little sitcom show. And it's like, eat your veggies, Tammy. But no, like, for real. Eat your vegetables. Eat your mm-hmm. fruit. All of that goes mm-hmm. into how it tastes. Mm-hmm. Hey, tr- because you will have a natural taste. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I- I've done that experiment on myself. Because, okay, anytime mm-hmm. I'm doing something different, I want to try it out on myself before I tell anyone else about it, right? So yeah, I went and I did like a fruit cleanse and I would eat my fruit mm-hmm. 
um, ate nothing but fruits. And then I incorporated my vegetables and certainly when I was drinking water. And I mean, I drink water all the time anyway. If I drink anything outside of water, something else is going on in my life. Like it just, I needed that one look and then I'm done. Because after that, it's okay. down. <laughs> but I've done it on myself. So I did it for a week straight. Now, as you mm-hmm. know, I have a partner. So, okay, you know, he out and, you know, he do his thing any other time. But Bo, I remember doing that and his just, the body reaction. First of all, I felt mm-hmm. myself and I was like, uh huh, you feel that? Because I feel it. Do you feel it? And he was like, oh yeah. <laughs> but then when he tasted, girl, you would have thought he ain't never, ain't no food money. Okay. Ah, okay. Cool beans. So, <laughs> right, thanks. <laughs> right. That's my life now. Like, um, that I don't, I, I barely eat meat. Um, when I do, it's very, very rare. Um, it's normally around that time anyway when I eat my red meat. Right. I did eat red meat. Um, now I don't eat that at all. No red meat, no pork. Um, I don't really do shit. Yeah, like no. That. I'm pescatarian, so, hey. you know, all of that is not even in my diet at all. <clears throat> at all. But at all. <laughs> what made me first realize that it was literally what you eat? Um, an ex girlfriend of mine mm-hmm. actually compared. She was bold enough to compare me to her ex. Oh, and I asked her. I said, "Who tastes better?" And she said, "Her ex." And I oh. said, "You really are going to say your ex?" And she said, "Yeah." And she says, "Not to say that your taste nasty, but she says she has a natural sweetness to her." And because they were still friends, like, I knew that they were just platonic friends. I asked her, I said, what do you do? Mm. And I said, because she legit said, you taste better. And I, and I said, I, I, at first I got offended, of course, of course. because that's my natural instinct. I'm, a, I'm an emotional creature. Uh, but I really, like, legitimately was like, okay, so then what do you do that I don't do? And she was like, oh, I stay eating fruit. Mm. And I was like, y'all eat fruit all the time. But she was like, no, like, I eat fruit legitimately day in, day out. She's like, mm-hmm. it's always, you know, she said, I'm always sucking on pineapples or I got a strawberry or something. She said, that's all I do. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. So I said, I need to increase my fruit intake because while I'm mm-hmm. eating an apple here, an orange there, you know, them little cuties here, I'm not eating them every day. Mm-hmm. So now that I've changed my diet and changed my appetite towards food and I increased and put more veggies and more more fruit in there oh mm-hmm. honey i've not gotten a bad review since okay Come on now. <laughs> and that's in that that's real that's so real yeah. like again it's just it, it you gotta know yourself bro <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta you do. things like you may think that what you got you know is straight and it may be hey if you find what it baby girl be happy but okay learn with yourself learn yourself try some different shit you don't have to eat fried chicken every day, boo boo. Matter of fact, sure don't. Uh, well, a biggest thing for me when it changed because um, I don't, I don't really know what you would call my diet. I don't know if I'm mm-hmm. vegetarian. I don't know if I'm. It's a you diet. I'm yeah. It's, I'm definitely there because I eat seafood like a mug, but I don't eat it uh-huh. because again, you are what you eat. So I don't eat it right. so often, but sometimes you need that meat. I don't like chicken mm-hmm. anymore. That, I mean, I had chicken so many different ways, bro. Like I'm over it. Like, like sometimes yes. dang, I want a fried chicken. Nah, but I done had it for something different. Give me some jackfruit. Let me see what that tastes. Like. Okay, like, okay. So, so we definitely like, tried like floor. Exactly, but because I went out and tried some shit, my the pussy that I love so much, the pussy that I was so proud of, I was even. It was better. Again, it's almost yeah. like a vagina steam. Like I didn't even know I needed it, and well, I didn't even know until you did it. it. Exactly. It was just like, oh, okay, all right. Well, shit, she was good, but now she better. What's up? <laughs> like exactly. Up, upgrade your fucking life. It don't matter exactly. Who you are upgrade your shit. Like stop yes. saying stuff. Like you don't just because you are in the situation that you're in right now, baby girl. You ain't got to stay up. Oh, exactly. Up. You have to grow with you. Like, your body changes as you grow and, and develop. And you got to get there, too, mentally. Come on, now. So, we trying to get your yaya there. Yeah. Because it oh. needs to be there. So, you got the Kegel. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's, let's put that out there because the more you use your pelvic muscles, the better they are. Oh, a tip so, for that. <laughs> if you're yes. bold, if you really want to try some shit. So, I used to go to the gym a lot. 
Um, of course, pandemic sh- shut all it down. But when I used to go to the gym, uh, right before I would go, I would insert my Benoit balls. And this is before mm-hmm. I got a Yanni egg. So now I have a Yanni egg. But before then, I had my Benoit balls. Mm-hmm. I've been little bitches in, right? <laughs> yes. I would go to the gym. You're talking about, first of all, I'm at such a different piece. Nobody could fuck with me in the gym. I got my headphones mm-hmm. on. I'm using my Kegel muscles. So I'm on the treadmill, but I'm still uh working my pelvic muscles during my yep. squats, I'm holding it now that now I'm doing like instead of posting I'm holding it more man don't you know I can I'm trying to tell you <laughs> It'll yep. <fuck> you right up. <laughs> it sure will it's I'm, awesome. tell you. I'm telling you try some shit what I mean the more you like, use them the better they are the stronger they get mm-hmm. it's uh, beneficial for you there's actually an app out there so some women may not sure. think of, of how to do Kegels and whatever. Go into your Google Play or to your Apple, whatever the fuck it is. App like, store. There you go. <laughs> go into that thing. <laughs> Android users, whatever. Wait, <laughs> don't, don't do Apple now. <laughs> you know I'm Appled out. <laughs> uh, anywho, go into your yeah. device and place where you find apps <laughs> and uh, type in Kegel exercises. Um, fill out which app, which app better resonates with you I guess I have one that has a reminder um we do a couple of rounds or whatever and then I do it throughout the day um but yeah I know that's right yeah. I'll be doing it mostly when I'm at work like I do it as a stress relief I do so like when I'm really stressed at work and mm-hmm. I need a minute I kind of just close my eyes and I yeah. giggle <laughs> I do the same thing that's crazy <laughs> that's my it. calm down Mm, I just be saying that breathe in, breathe out the whole time. I'm flexing my pelvic muscles mm-hmm. and then releasing it. <sighs> and every woman knows how to do it. It's simply tightening your walls and releasing them over and over, repeatedly, yeah. very slowly. That okay? So, and then for the women who are still like, "Well, fuck," I still don't know what she's talking about. It's okay. It's all right. Try to no. The perfect way it was explained to me. Try to hold your peace. Mm-hmm. That's that's the exact same thing you do when you kegel. It's like you you have to go to the bathroom and you need to hold it. So if you don't know that you know how to kegel, now you do. That's it. That's all you're doing. It's not hard. And the funny thing is, it's so simple that you'll be like, man, this is stupid. This ain't going to happen. Do it for five days straight. This yep. is when they have a routine. And then have either, even if you don't have a partner to try it out on, use your fingers. Masturbate. Okay. <laughs> Jinx, but yeah, <laughs> baby, you can- one, two, three, got it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, masturbate, play with yourself, and and you know what? If you don't masturbate, if you like, oh, I don't really do that, or that's not really my thing. That's because you haven't found what works for you. Everyone yep. needs to masturbate. Every, I mean, because men do it, and we ain't talking about them. It's just about us today. We focusing. Okay. Everyone needs to masturbate. Even yes. if one of those people who like, well, I just can't go in and pleasure myself with a toy, don't use the toy. Go in there and rub on your neck. Yeah. Play with your thighs. You got to be, yes. Because like, love on you, you. you got, yes, you got to <laughs> love on you before you ever expect anybody else to. Like, you got to appreciate you. You got to know you in and out. Like, I touch all that, because I, I cleanse myself with my hands. I don't use a rag because I don't want dyes <laughs> down there or anything like that. But like, you got to be not afraid to touch you. Yeah. If you are, you're not going to know exactly what you want. It's some you don't want anybody to dictate that for you. Mm-mm. It's some grown women who haven't even looked at their vaginas. You're trying to tell me the minute you slept with and the doctors who delivered your, who you, delivered your children and even your gynecologist has seen your vagina, but you haven't? That is exactly. a problem. Know yourself. I masturbate in front of the mirror because I'm <laughs> look and see that I love me. I let the fuck out of me. So okay. when I'm, <laughs> when I'm uh, if I catch it, if I'm masturbating because I have this really big mirror in my room. If, uh, mm-hmm. if I'm on my bed masturbating because I do it everywhere. But if I'm on my bed masturbating and I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror and I see that pretty little pussy, what? I go in even. I love me. Do it. Love yourself. Appreciate yourself. It's not weird. It's not crazy. Is none of that. No. Like, I will stop in a minute and just look down. Like, because I can see me. So I just look down there. Like, sometimes if I'm touching and I, I don't feel something that's right now, okay, what's going on? And I'm squatting and looking. Yeah. Right in the air. Hey, but you know what? <laughs> Even to the women who got big bellies, because look, I <laughs> my belly is shrinking. 
But I still had one. Even that big motherfucker, I put that shit to the side, put my leg. Bro, there she go. Listen, you once upon a time, <laughs> I had extra weight too. You can tuck that tummy and look yeah. for real, for real. I about to say this is not no skinny girl activity. Nope, ain't it's no not- shame game here. Love your body, because if you don't love your body, nobody else will. Mm-hmm. I don't want nobody to dictate how I'm supposed to like me for me. Oh, I don't want you to dictate that. That's my job. Some people don't, some women don't even know how to orgasm by themselves. Like, uh, find out what works for you. Like, play with your, matter of fact, a little bit of a homework ex- exercise, if you will. Facts. Next time we'll you get ready to page. <laughs> for real. Next time you get ready to masturbate, right? Really, really take time with yourself. If you want to look at a porno, cool. If you want to remember some shit, cool. But whatever it is, light a candle, play with your nipples, tease yourself a little bit, run your nails over your thighs, play on your inner yeah. thighs. Really turn yourself the fuck on until you're like, fuck, I'm about to explode. Touch your pussy. A, a little tidbit. When you're about to climax, squeeze your nipples too. Oh, girl. It increases the climax. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> squeeze <laughs> your nipples. Hey, my nipples are my soft. Like, that's my spot. My nipples are my, one of my spots. So, like, yeah, it's, it's a done deal. Up. Don't don't even play. Like, you know how some people like you playing around and no, nah, don't do that. Cause if you touch my nipples, you about to suck on this pussy. So nope. okay. <laughs> okay. coming your way in less than five. <laughs> Come on now. But yeah. I'm telling you, ladies, masturbate. Uh if you decide to masturbate and tell us your story and tell you how tell us how you feel, let us know. Share some masturbate yes. with us and we'll talk about it next pod. But we yes. want to know, like. I, Email I us your for, stories. Yeah, if you if you at boobstionary uh-huh. at gmail dot com. Oh wait, one more time. Let them know. Boobstionary at gmail dot com. That is b o o b t i o n a r y at gmail dot com. Email us your story. Yeah, and you can be completely anonymous. We're not. I mean, you will be. We're not. We're not feeling it. Yeah, right. I mean, we're here to talk about it. But seriously, even if you have a question about masturbation, like. Again, some people don't like to use sex toy. I, I, mm-hmm. There's a toy out there for you. We'll get on that later. And then later, 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 later time. But right now, use your finger. Use your finger. Okay. Like rub on your clit. See if you can make it yes. sex toy. I mean, just come with clitoral stimulation only. You don't have to penetrate Bruh, yourself. It's a bitch. I'm just saying like, use clitoral see? stimulation when you do it right. It's a mm-hmm. bitch because you come quick as shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and then my thing, I should be fired off. It'd be like, be like, oh, oh. like I, I, oh, okay, it's like little missiles. Oh, uh, well, they be kind of locked a little bit, shaking. I'm like, okay, all right. Let me get up. <laughs> I gotta go to work. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh, man. this is gonna be exciting. Yeah, so <laughs> we gotta hear y'all stories too. So definitely hit us up or shoot, leave a voice message if you want. Yeah, you on anchor. Or if you happen to be listening through Anchor, definitely leave us a voice note. You don't have to leave your name. Just tell us your experience. We want to hear it. Yeah, we are women here. We share everything. I didn't have a bad experience masturbating. It was I was like, what the fuck? I Wait, what? Let's see. I was it was younger, younger years. So you know, we stay exploring, trying to figure shit out. Now I've always yeah. had my finger, and like I said before, once I saw a bean, it was a wrap. I was like, this button is awesome. But then, <laughs> I, then I traveled on and I found sex toys because, I don't know, porno, shit like that. And girls playing. Yes. Okay, well, this is what you're supposed to do. I did it. It was so wrong. I didn't even, I didn't prep myself, nothing. And then I was penetrated. It was just bad. I was like, yo, this Ooh. I'm never playing with this. This ain't it. I didn't know. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Nope. Then later on, I tried it again, but I did it my way. And that's what I did. Mm-hmm. I, um, I figured out what I liked. I, I let the vibrator kind of roll over my clit a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Then I started to penetrate myself slowly. Like, just with the tip. Mm-hmm. Of, just play with the right, right there, the entry of your pussy. Just just play with it a little bit. Yeah, because you got to ease into it. It's not like a rushing thing. Like, it's not a hot and ready, ready to go. No. Mm-mm. You got to ease into it. Warm it up a little bit. Yeah. Now, now that I'm an expert masturbator, yeah, sometimes I'll be having quickies with myself. Like, all right, shit, I got five minutes before I got to log in. Let's go ahead. Like a little bit. Facts. <laughs> but you got to get to that point. You can't start off thinking nah, that you know nah. everything. No. Ooh. The same way you learn a subject <laughs> in school, you have to learn your body. That is so true. It's, a, it's a learning process. Yeah. Uh, awesome. I can't wait. 
y'all send it in. We're here for it. We want all the shits. I mean, all the shits. Anything you can think of, even bad stuff. Let us know. I stop. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh. if you've been through it, you are not alone. That's that's one thing that us women. That is the lie. main thing we want you to know as women. <laughs> we are never experiencing any of this Mm-mm. alone. Nah, because even if your quote unquote case is rare. You're still not alone, baby girl. I you know <laughs> you ain't the first to go through it. It won't be the last. Nah, I might as well help each other out. I don't know why y'all tripping. <laughs> now, we do want to hear your story because it's unique to you. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be different from every other story told. However, you're not the only one going through it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, speaking of emails, <laughs> we actually... Got another question from our listener. Oh, on yes. relations and situations. Okay. All right. So we jumping into this thing. All right. So here is the question. I'm going to read it how it was written. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So it says, do y'all give women the benefit of the doubt if they message your man, if it's public, y'all together? Or... Do you let it ride? And now I'm going to read the situation mm-hmm. that goes with that. Okay. So, um, all right. This girl knows. She says she knows me well enough. Um, and she's been begging my fiance to meet her for weeks. Yes, mm-hmm. I checked him on it. But, like, I want to check her too. I could see if. I was a stranger, but sis had me praying for her during the pandemic. She's a nurse. I feel betrayed. Every time she acts, he blew her, but he should have never been entertaining her. So, um, A few things to unpack there. There's always things to unpack. Not everything, nothing is always black and white. Let's just, let's just throw it out there right then and there. Um, mm-hmm. To answer the question, for me, I will always give someone a blank canvas and you're going to paint your own picture so I can see you. Mm -hmm. That's period. So I'm not going to automatically assume that because just knowing myself, I have plenty of homeboys that are just that homeboys. Like they will talk Mm -hmm. to me about girlfriends, wives, baby mamas. They talk about sex. They'll talk about whatever relationships. And when we talk about sex is not, Oh damn, Key! I'm trying to see what the pussy like. Nah, it's like hey. I was eating my girl pussy, and she did such and such so and so. What about like we have those kind of conversations? Because sometimes mm-hmm. you're gonna need that different sex's opinion. You're gonna need that mm-hmm. uh, that different person's opinion. So your friendships are not determined on your sex. You can have platonic friendships. You really can. That's yeah. a legit, very true thing. Now. Mm-hmm. So that's the first part. So do I give the woman or do I give that person the benefit of a doubt and like see what they're what they're gonna do? Then hell yeah, do you boo? Cause I I would I hated it when a friend of mine would have a girlfriend and she automatically assumed just because he and I were close that I was trying mm-hmm. to fuck or that we fucked in the past. Never but <laughs> they're fiancés and she said it's public that they're fiancés. Even then, I have I have homeboys who are married. I'm not trying to fuck them. No, but if you're trying to like, if okay, so I would feel a way if it's somebody I know Mm -hmm. and you know I'm engaged, you know who I'm engaged to, but yet you're coming at him trying to meet up with him. I would feel a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that's completely different. That's what I'm saying. So like the first part of it is, do you give women the benefit of a doubt? Yes, I would definitely give them that. You can be platonic. I don't care where we are in the stage of my relationship. That's fine. Now, the situation at hand? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, nah, baby girl. That ain't cool. Because Okay, then, we, yeah. Okay, yes. No, I, I'm on the same page. We agree there. Yeah, because that's that's what I'm saying. So, with me having my homeboys and my friends and this and the third, I know that there are certain boundaries and there are certain lines that I can't cross. So, how me and my mm-hmm. friends, I may have been able to call him at 10 o'clock like, hey, nigga, what you doing? Come through. Roll up. <laughs> we right. Chill. That's that's cool. But once he gets in that relationship, once he's engaged, that's all. once he's married, oh no, nah, bro, mm-hmm. I'm gonna see between nine to five. And when you're okay, hey, okay. matter of fact, when what, I call oh, you, yes. hey, what's up, homie? Where your chick? Oh, hey, girl, yep. hey, boo, put me on speakerphone, let her know who it is. And yep. because I talk like baby, boo, honey, sweetheart, 
you know, Southern girl through and through. That's how I talk. But I talk to her like that as well. I'm going to give her the same respect. I'm going to give him the same respect. I'm going to respect your relationship. I'm not going to fuck over your relationship. Oh, no. Because I'm not. Not at all, because that's not my intent. Exactly. So in that situation with the girl hitting her man up for weeks, seems like, just for a lunch, baby girl, you could have came over and got some oodles and noodles. What the fuck are you trying to okay. hit a man up okay. for? <laughs> you know, we would have ordered takeout so you could have took it with you. Because, um, <laughs> listen, here you Cause that's bullshit. so that situation. Nah, you are completely you're you're completely right and justified to feel how you feel. Now, how you act on it, you check, you check the dude sure. exactly. You check the dude. That was step one. That's perfect. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. You probably shouldn't have been uh, entertaining it. However, let me put a pin right there. What I've learned, especially hanging with my homeboys, what we as women or what we as some partners, because it's not even just a sex thing, but when mm-hmm. it comes to certain partners. We see things completely different because we're on the outside looking in and we're also, yep. everybody thinks differently. So when sure my man looks at, and he's like, oh, this girl's stupid. Bitch, I ain't, why ain't anybody come see you? He not thinking nothing of it. It's nothing. He not entertaining it. He's like, nah, I'm good. What the fuck is, nah, why am I meeting you? He, he, exactly. He, he, he ain't even thinking about it no more. He about to go on by his day. He about to get on the game. He about to make some investments. He's doing whatever the fuck he does throughout his day, but he's not thinking about that girl. You nope. see that message, or you see it, and you like, oh, this nigga is trying to play with me. Nope, that's not it, baby girl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't even understand the dynamics of that friendship. But, exactly. you know, that's also, like I said, you like she was right on checking him because yeah, you know, he did come to her with it. Mm-hmm. And like she said, you know, if she felt he was entertaining it in certain ways, that's for them to discuss. So she was right in that respect to check Period. him first. However, and you're in her direct situation. I too would have checked, oh girl, because you got yeah. one too many times to be approaching somebody that you know I'm engaged to, and you know they engaged to me, mm-hmm. and you know oh. we're working on us. So I'm <laughs> gonna set you straight a time or two yeah. because this 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 is a it's a recurring thing. You know what I mean? It's not like you hit him up one time and he said no, nah, and then that's boom, that's it. You kept coming. Mm-mm. Nah, ain't so no now it's time for me to get in the middle. Period. I'm telling you, it's not going to be a second time. Like, and I'm not just saying that because, you know, sometimes we get really boisterous and and try to feel like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't do X, Y, and Z in this situation. No, fuck that. I've been in that situation and I checked it real quick. Hey, let me tell you something. Look at little bitch. (laughs) If you're going to be in okay stuff, and and I don't even like to come at people like that, but for real, if you're going to be in our lives and you're going to be his friend, you will respect us and you don't need to be it. I don't Mm -hmm. give a fuck what your past was. I don't give a fuck. Exactly. If you, I don't. I don't give a fuck. I truly don't give a fuck. Like again, because I, I've been on both sides of that coin. I've been the mm-hmm. homegirl who's legit just a homegirl, but I also know my place. I'm not approaching some nigga saying, "Hey, let's go to lunch." Uh, exactly. Times. And if I do invite him to lunch, because there were times me and my homie or whatever, we that's that that was our thing. I would introduce him to different restaurants, and we would try different things uh, just together. That was our shit. When he got a girl. Hey, you still want to go to sushi spot? Oh, you you don't? Okay, cool. I asked him in front of his his shorty though. Yo, mm-hmm. to go. And then sometimes I would invite her. Sometimes it wouldn't. Sometimes I need to talk about some shit with my friend. And sometimes I know this nigga need to vent about you. Nah, you can't come. But then there's other times. Yeah, come on through. That's a different approach. I've also been the girlfriend who has somebody in their lives, and I was like, eh, she a little too close. You know, she a little too friendly. <laughs> like, why her mouth? You know what I'm saying? Why are you walking out with gray sweatpants in her mouth water? She know what that dick be like? Like, it's just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's different. So, in that situation, yeah, she should already text Shorty and let her know what's up. And if the Shorty yeah. can't respect it, and if he's in a relationship with his woman, and he's... he's mm-hmm. After you've addressed it. Now, again, like I said, he may have been oblivious to it at first because sometimes yeah. people are. After yeah. it's addressed, though, and it's still the situation reoccurring, that's when it's a problem because your feelings yep. are still valid. You still have to be heard in this situation. Okay, y'all may have a history of friendship, but I'm supposed to be your future. I don't exactly. give a fuck about what this bitch talking about. I don't give a fuck that she wanted to go to lunch. What did she need to go to? What lunch did she need? <laughs> what the fuck is she trying to eat on, Shadi? Like, no. So after it's been exactly. a day, if it keeps reoccurring, tell her she need to go on by the life. And if she can't respect that, Man, just beat her ass. I'm just playing. 
fight, fight, fight. <laughs> World star. No, please do not do that. <laughs> Look, we do not Day do no Day <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. But, not but no, that. for real. Like, just yeah. come from old girl. I'm sorry. That's that's my that's my vote on everything right now. Come from old girl because she out of pocket. She out of line. Yeah. You know, already checked your homie. Mm-hmm. You know, already checked your homie. So, you know, you know where his heart lies because he told you about it. He's at least honest enough that to that point. Mm-hmm. But And I say do it very, very. Don't make it like loving hip hop. Like, don't meet up at no spot and then try to draw, throw a drink on it. That's stupid. And you and your man finally meet her for lunch. Let's go to lunch. What's up? <laughs> then when you talk to her, hey. The way you've been approaching this whole situation, either you need to make it clear to me what your intentions were, or you really mm-hmm. need to step the fall. You need to fall back until I feel comfortable with you again, or you just need to exit. Exactly. Because you, yeah, I would, I, at this point, I would just tell Shorty to exit the situation. I ain't got time. Yeah, I mean, I, I would too. I don't know the history between this man and this woman, but I would just be like, "Hey, you can't be her friend no more." Or okay. at least talk about it because, but the the reason I say don't just cut a hope like <laughs> wrong chest around my back. The reason I said don't just cut her off like that is because it's like sometimes when you challenge people, and again, I don't know the individuals personally, but sometimes mm-hmm. when you challenge somebody and say, "Hey, don't talk to that person no more," it's like, "Whoa, bitch, I'm a grown ass man. Would you f- let me talk to me like that?" Like <laughs> sometimes, but he re- but if he respects your relationship. And he's trying to be a husband, and that is right. he should definitely take your feelings into consideration. Period. Like, if that's I, where I was about to go with that one, yeah. Like, if she's making this uncomfortable, if she, an outside force, is fucking up our relationship, she needs to be removed because nothing mm-hmm. should mess up what we have. Period. Exactly. I don't give a fuck who it is. It could be a homeboy yeah. talking too much. Exactly. Talking about no, nigga. Get the fuck on somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> hey, exit stage left and stay there. Come on now. Where the Sandman at? <laughs> okay. <laughs> For real. Oh, I do miss that. But, do. Um, we gonna jump into the let's talk topic of the day. The last talk topic of the day. Because uh, uh, we got uh, uh, somewhere. Uh, 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 that's pussy. Uh, hey. Uh, hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong with us here, I swear. But I don't know how to act since my button got bigger. Okay. <laughs> like, listen. I'm going to figure out the secret formula. Okay. To the crazy okay. daddy mix. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen I'm thankful for the song yeah I'm glad oh, yeah. that it sparked the controversy that it sparked yes. because it, it needed to resurface like yeah. don't act like we just were down here strictly for the pleasure of men and we can't enjoy it Mm-mm. fuck all you niggas like okay. <laughs> my thing is, and hell even some studs too fuck you and your plastic dick my thing, yes. <laughs> my thing is so at first I didn't, I ain't, okay, y'all know I'm a hermit crab sometimes, I'm reading my little rock, whatever. I don't really be in, out in the street. I don't be doing shit. So I heard about it and I kept seeing clips on it. And people were mm-hmm. just, I, I heard so many different things about it. I heard women singing his praises. I heard men saying that's what's up. And then I also heard men and women dogging it. Like, why would you say yeah. this? Why the fuck is this out here? That's, that's what's wrong with women. That's what's wrong with black women. They always showing this sexuality. Like, like just negative. And I was like, what the fuck? Then I saw uh, Cardi B's response saying, uh-huh. "Y'all support women who are actually out here speaking on some real on some real shit. Y'all enjoy right. the shit, the entertainment exactly. part, which y'all ask for. Exactly. And when y'all get to you, y'all mad." I said, "Oh, wait a minute now, Cardi." <laughs> so but that, she's speaking the truth. Oh yeah, it's facts. It's a hundred percent facts. There was nothing wrong in that shit. There's nothing in her argument that was not a hundred percent correct. So I was like, "All right, let me go. Let me watch this shit for myself." So I watched exactly. It, right? Bo, mm-hmm. first of all, I have, me being me, I see all kind of different perspectives. So, 
to me, it sounds like all you know, regular shit is on the radio. This sounds like regular shit is on the fucking radio. Sex been selling for it eons. Does. Like we've been talking about pussies and fucking and sucking dick and everything. Are you fucking kidding me? What no about different. I got all different area codes? What about girls? No girls, different. Girls? What about what, what about, about tip my drill? The tip drill the song, oh, let alone the video. Like it's all kind of shit. So how dare these motherfuckers come in with this bullshit? It's the same shit. Now- listen, listen, listen. <laughs> like the whole argument is invalid. Because yep. we are like pleasure is 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 a birthright to everybody. Mm-hmm. Like we all need it. We all seek it. But you just know, because what? I'm a woman with extra assets, don't mean I'm just put down here for you to look at and fantasize after. And just what you think I'm supposed to later? Hey, but you know what's so funny about that though? The female body, the uh, especially like our vaginas, they were designed yeah. our vulva or, or yep. They were, oh my bad, yeah. But they were designed to have multiple orgasms. They were designed to have yeah. a pleasure. We were, everything is like our nipples, our clitoris. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like this, we, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why do you think that we were given all of these gifts for you? No, sir. Exactly. No, sir. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and like, you know, I'll be watching um sexologist Shamira on Instagram because she's like my like I'm I'm channeling her like she's my spirit animal in, in, in human form but <laughs> um but like she was talking about the movement behind the song as well and she brought up a very interesting point and I I, I just I got to I got to share the statistic with you Please so do. while 99% of men come and and get satisfaction out of sex only 70% of women do. Yeah. And yeah. then, part, majority of that 70% are pleased or pleasured by other women. Mm-hmm. Because we know. Like, y'all. We know. <laughs> but that's scary. That's a scary fact. We got to get it together. Y'all really don't that's know right. your bodies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Like, Play with them pussies. That's what they're here for. Yeah. I don't play with them, but yeah. Like, you got the key ingredients to making it wet. Mm. Now do what you need to do with it. Yes, Lord. Shit. And you know what? Matter of fact, dress up in some sexy-ass lingerie and all kind of other shit and just dance in the mirror. Play with yourself. I'm telling you. Turn yourself on. (laughs) Turn yourself on. And also, when I was looking at the video, it was still creative. It was Mm -hmm. so creative. It was so different. Honestly, I'm a big, big, big Missy Elliott fan, right? Like huge yes. Missy Elliott fan. It yes. Me Missy vibes. And it, it was definitely like, did. Just the production of the video, the different cuts of it, the the colors, the the all the the, the animation to it. Yes, all of it that. It gave you Missy so, vibes. That was my first Missy. initial reaction when I saw it I too. Said, what? From the different yeah, color man. schemes yep. to like them actually interacting with the background colors. Exactly. And, it, it gave you Missy vibes all mm-hmm. over there. Yes, I agree to that 100%. Yeah. That's my first thought when I saw the video. It wasn't nothing yeah. negative. It mm-hmm. wasn't, oh, they don't need to be talking about this. Because it's nothing different than what men are saying today. Mm-hmm. Like, no. the men put explicit lyrics on the radio and just, they say it a different way. Yeah. And it's okay. But then when, when it comes from a woman who actually wants to say, hey, oh, I enjoy this too, but I'm talking about me. Yeah, it's a problem. I love it, and I love the fact that we are now in this nice developing age of let me catch my nut and I'm gonna holler at you later. I fucking love it. (laughs) I love it. And at first, because I've had this mentality before, and it was described as you think like a nigga, you think like a nigga. Fact. Oh, bro. I think like me. Mentality is real. (laughs) It is, but I hate when they say that because why do I have to be fair to like? Why you gotta throw me in this 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 boy or this masculine type uh, uh, category because mm-hmm. I have pleasure and I don't have to have an emotional connection with you or even if it is emotional the emotions that I have for you they're uh, I, under- I understand our relationship yep. <laughs> I understand what's up I don't have to hit you up yeah you gave me some dick why are you calling me right now no I don't want no pizza nigga like <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but that's also because like it was never really talked about. Mm-mm. You know, we didn't know as women, we were never expected to be with multiple people or to explore sexual our sexuality, even with one person. We were never taught to say, hey, you, you gonna get tired of doing the same thing repeatedly, you're gonna have to branch out of that. You know, you're gonna have to add a little spice. Nobody talks about that as women. So how do we know to do it? You know, besides now songs like this being put out there to kind of say, hey, oh, there is more to this than just laying there. You're su- you're mm-hmm. supposed to be getting some out of this too, not just other people. Yeah, but I mean, but it's the thing is, even though it's boom and it's in your face in 2020, you got to think about some of the older stuff too. Because like, think about Adina Howard, my nasty grind. Yeah, oh, she was she was on a whole different thing. Like, what's up? I'm gonna put this pussy in your life, and I'm gonna fuck your world up. You say you're a freak. Oh, she didn't care. Like <laughs> but freak. even older than that. Music back in when music first started taking off, like back in the jazz age and the blues age, they were singing about it then, and it was very raw. Oh yeah, it was. Like I, oh yeah, girl, I ran across this old old thing, and I cannot remember for the life of me his name, but he was talking about his dick getting hard by watching his wife cheat on him, and he was looking out the yes. window, he was peeping through the window. That's the name of the song. I cannot remember the artist's name, but it's called "Peeping Through the Window." It's an old 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 song. And he found, and uh, he was watching his wife cheat on him with, I think, either his friend or somebody. But he was watching through the window, and he was like, "My thing hard." <laughs> and then the police officer came up and saw him people through the window. His dick got hard. This was oh an actual God. song, and I'm like, and that, but that's my motherfuckers point. be talking about <laughs> y'all out here watching motherfuckers cheat on you, get your dick hard. So you like to be a cockle. That's what that is. You a cockle. That is. Yes, and it was so descriptive in the song that you literally can play back an active description of what's happening in your mind. So yeah. why <laughs> is it now an issue that a black woman yeah, is doing that about her own sexuality? Exactly. Because y'all won't expect us to do it. That's why it's an issue. The you thing- wanted us to stay in the dark about it. I was just about to say that they don't want you to say it out loud because the black woman has always been this overly sexualized being, period. But it was just for somebody else's pleasure. It was like even we ain't got to talk about that shit. Everybody know about slave days and how they did us. Fuck them. We passed that. Trying to. So (laughs) but it's still real and it's still relevant to this day. It's like black women were overly sexualized, sexualized for our asses, our lips, our breasts, our hips. All of Everything that. that made us black women. Pretty. That's it. But it was only used for someone else's pleasure, whether it was some nasty ass little master or, or the men there or just mm-hmm. whoever, who any man could do whatever they wanted to to any woman. But a black woman, you can, it's whatever. It don't even matter. Yep. Do it. But the moment, the she bottom. That back, yeah, the moment she takes that back, the moment she steps from up under that caste system and says, oh, I am an awesome goddess, and this is my body. And matter of fact, I'm going. You gonna help me come? No, I'm gonna come by fucking on you, and I'm gonna go about my business. That that hurt niggas' feelings. It's like, oh, what you mean? <laughs> it's like exactly you take that power away. Fuck you. I'm gonna do what the fuck I want to do. This is my pussy. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> exactly because I now know my yeah. orgasm is my it's my responsibility to get. I'm not supposed to rely mm-hmm. on you to get that for me. Yeah, but no, the female that's for me to get. That's it. The female's orgasm in, in is uh magical. Like that black girl yeah. that's not that, I mean it's throughout anything <laughs> that is done, but definitely with our orgasms, uh sex magic. That's a real yes. thing. Because <laughs> our clits are way bigger than what we yeah. see. We only see the very tip of it. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a very, very big structure in there. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to put up a picture on my on the page when this comes out. We're going to have a little section just for y'all about everything we're referencing so y'all can go back and y'all can flip yeah. through and y'all can see it. Matter of fact, why is stuff y'all need to know? Yeah, I do. That come here motion, you still stroking that click. Yes. <laughs> it's back there. Yes. It is. <sighs> but yeah, I loved it. Wet ass pussy was is controversial. I'm glad that it got brought up. Shout out to Cardi, yeah. shout out to Meg, all of them. I fucking I love it. I love the creativity of the video. I love that it was two strong women of color 
doing their shit, talking about the body. And, uh, loving about their body. bodies. And that was it. They was just loving it. They was yeah. having fun. They was in there having a fucking ball in front of the camera. Fuck you niggas. Like, it was. And we got a <laughs> shout out to the little people in the video. I saw no Mandy. I saw yeah. Mandy. You I, know, we got a shout out to the little people because I do love them equally in their own right as well. Um, and I just love the empowerment behind it. Because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't a self centered song at all, but at the same time, it was like no, I'm that bitch. Yeah, I feel like I feel like in <laughs> and some people may be like, what the fuck is he talking about? But I like videos like uh, like Beyonce shit. Oh shit, what is the shit? The um, goddamn it, formation. Whew, Jesus, yeah. I'm looking at the video in my head. I can't okay. think. Of- so I love videos like Formation and then like her project King. You need that mm-hmm. shit. You are, you are beautiful. You are, you are more than sex. You are more than what the fuck they say they should, that you are. You are a strong ass being and you are a fucking goddess. No matter how many fucking hits we're giving to black women and black people, period, and people of color, period, no matter how many fucking things they've been through, we always rise the fuck up, period. Yeah, yep. you to Beyonce. Now you got on the flip side of that, yeah, we strong. Yeah, we get our shit done. Yeah, we goddesses. But we also like to fuck on some shit, and it's all right. So, yeah, shout and out to my Okay. It's you okay. You can be the be business-minded, <laughs> television-focused yep. woman, and all you want to be in all your rights. But it is okay to still say, at the end of the day, I have a pleasure that I need mm. to get out. Yeah. It's matter- okay to say <laughs> Most business women, well, that I've encountered, most women mm-hmm. who are very, very driven, like uh, in their professional lives, they mm-hmm. are very much open minded in the bedroom. And I yes. think that's because they take that initiative to try shit out. Like you and have they that know their body, period. They know themselves, yeah. even mm-hmm. if they don't know their bodies to their to like completion. They know themselves. They know that this shit, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with that. Exactly. Emotion. Get that emotional stress out of your life, lady. Your mm-hmm. sex life and your vagina and your, your level of peace will change. I promise you. Sure stop, will. Stop out with these niggas. Go and get your wet ass pussy. Eat your fruits. Drink your water. Masturbate. Don't have no negative energy around you. But I'm telling you, your whole life And don't change. be afraid <laughs> to get good dick. Oh, like, no. Nah. if it ain't it. Just say it's not it and walk away, sis. Oh my God, sis. You know how. Oh, no, so, okay. All right, y'all. So, I'm going to share. I don't know why I'm so open. I feel like I'm too open with y'all, but it's all right. We, we here. <laughs> Listen, so, ain't no th- <laughs> such thing as too open. <laughs> Shit, it was that one time. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> but. Thank you. So, I've had a sexual experience with someone before, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, I knew the person. He was a cool person. Whatever it was, he was a nice guy. All right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> he he began to give me cunnilingus, and if you don't know what that is, is he was just eating my pussy. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> I'm in tune with myself sexually. If nothing else, goddamn it, I know what I like and what I don't like. Because again, okay. I've been for many years. <laughs> I know many. What- <laughs> <laughs> so he went down south doing his thing, and I mean. If I videotaped it, you would have thought this motherfucker was going. And if I were moaning, stop faking. That's another thing. I don't fake. I'm not a pretender at all. That shit is whack. I used to be, and I'm not going to lie. I used to be because I used to think that it was an ego thing. I used to think that if I moaned and you were not good, it would make you good. And Mm -mm. sometimes that does. Moaning does increase the mood. That's just motivation. However, (laughs) it does not increase the skill. Nope, it just, not at all. Nope. So I did not fake. I was quiet. I didn't say nothing. I was like, "Can you stop?" And he was like, "Well, it's too good." I said, "No, actually, it's not. It's not good at all." And he just kind of looked like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's not good." But I mean, it's okay. You don't have to eat my pussy. Because at that point, I'm like, "All right, maybe you're just not a good pussy eater." That's fine. Some dudes don't eat pussy yeah. like that. It's, all right, cool. I'm still here. I'm still horny. Let's do this. Pull your dick out. Let's get it. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, you know, we, I'm letting him in, you know, we starting and shit. We about mm-hmm. to have not even two minutes, bro. And he didn't come. I mean, he was about to, I think, but I stopped him because I was like, fuck that. I ain't get my oh. 
on the hockey. I stopped him. I said, oh, can you stop? And he was like, what's wrong? You okay? I'm perfectly fine. Is it too big? Mm -mm, not at all, baby. Please move. <laughs> because <laughs> it's, not, it's not too big. You're not doing it too big. You're just not doing <laughs> nothing for me. And I told him that. And I, it's I'm a time to go. I'm silly. I'm all of that. So sometimes when I'm trying to be serious, people still think I'm joking around. No, ma'am. No, no. <laughs> so I, I, told him, <laughs> I told him that, though. Juju, I told him. I was like, nah, it's not good. It's not. And I just, can you just leave now? It's okay. Like, we still cool. I just, I just don't want you here anymore. I'm okay. And he, the way he looked at me, I know I crushed him. And I was younger. So I probably could have said better. I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm not saying I did the right thing. None of that shit. Sure. We, were, we were doing it. My point in saying that story is that I knew myself enough to know I'm not about to waste my time or my energy fucking with you, sir. Like we're not in a relationship. Yes. I, yes. to I don't have time to teach your ass. I wasn't in. I wasn't in that mindset back then. I'm not about Holy to teach you shit. Jesus, I'm, yes. not to do shit. I'm not faking for you. I'm not putting on for you. And I'm damn sure nobody get the satisfaction of saying, "Oh, I, she let me come." Like I didn't came in her suit. So, or he wasn't about to come in me, but I didn't came off her pussy or whatever. So I'm winning. I'm good. Nah, nigga, you tried it out. You was what you. It's almost like a probation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you or you didn't make the cut. Please leave. I've never been a faker. I cannot do it. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I lied. I faked one time, and then I realized that nothing was done, and that was it. I never faked again. Because yes, like <laughs> you gotta get tired of faking it. Like eventually, that gets old too. Yeah. Like, like for real. For real. You you gotta stop putting yourself first, and pleasure yeah. is part of putting yourself first too. Those endorphins that you release when mm -hmm. you pleasure when you pleasure yourself or when you're getting pleasure, you need those in your life. They increase your mood mm -hmm. and your they increase your your productivity. Like it, it's part of life cycle. You need them. Mm -hmm. We really need those, and it's very vital to your functionality in everyday life. And I know we don't think about it as that. But, uh -huh. like, sex is deeper than just an act. Uh -huh. And when people Preacher. realize that, maybe then they'll start internalizing it, you know, more towards a pleasure for self thing. Uh -huh. Because I, I'm going to get mine. No, best believe. Yeah. Because, because, like you said, sex is not just the act of it at all. Like, I know, and it's not going to be contradicting at all. You just really got to think about it and put each, each thing into its own category. So when I'm mm -hmm. masturbating, that's me releasing some energy. That's me giving myself mm -hmm. pleasure, relaxing. That's me just being in tune with myself. When I'm with my partner, oh, that's a whole different connection. That's two different souls twining together so we can go ahead and grow and be great. Like, that's that's completely different. I'm feeling all of my partner's energy, and I want them to feel all of mine. That's yes. completely different. Now, if, I'm, if I was single and I'm just fucking around or whatever, and I just say, hey, Ew, come in my pussy. Facts. We may be sharing that moment, but I'm not intertwining my soul with you. Although mm -hmm. you gotta be careful with your with your sexual ties and things like that, you gotta be careful. Those energies and those demons, they are real. But very uh, real. You can meet someone with the same energy that's on the same shit as you that's not gonna fuck up and not have you with so many soul ties. Learn yep. your shit. There's a difference in it. So I'm not yep. saying just go out here and be fucking around on everybody. If you not equipped for it or if your soul or your vibe is not that, that's fine. Don't do it. Like that. But if you can, fuck that. Go do it. Go yep. do it. <laughs> Stop worrying about the next person. Just close that's your it. mouth that's about that's it. it. People don't that's know that's what that's you don't tell them you did. Everybody go, no. Just close your mouth about what you're doing and you ain't got to worry about your business being in the streets. Mm -mm. And then, and even then if, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, you even gotta vet who you with. Like, if mm -hmm. you can't trust the person that you you're trying to sleep with, ain't gonna go off running their mouth, then you don't need to sleep with them. It ain't that much much digging around to make me sleep with you. And yeah. and and I know, oh my god, he might go back and tell this and this and this person. Yes, yeah. I'm single and I'm you know I'm at liable to do what I want to do, but I may not want my business in the street. Mm -mm. No, nah, because any of my any of my affairs have never knock on wood, but I'm straight. Cause I, I fuck with the people like mm -hmm. my thing is I didn't I didn't dick hop. That's that's what I want people to understand. Yeah. I didn't dick hop or nothing like that. Like and then even if I did, that's my business. Like fuck it. But I didn't. Like I didn't dick hop like that. But right. when I did decide to have some dick, 
I already knew this person was cool. People, I know your mama mm-hmm. like at least I knew something about you. And I right, we can try some shit. <laughs> yes. Right, yeah. Do it. There was a level of comfort already maintained with who I was calling. Exactly. So, you know, if I was to say, hey, yeah, I know this person gonna give it to me how I want. So I'm gonna call you right now. I don't want no emotional ties to you. I just want to act and then you can go on about your day. And yeah. I was the type of person where if I was at your house, I'm gonna say, hey, can you go ahead and take me home? Because I yeah. don't want to even start an emotional connection with you because I know staying mm-hmm. and lingering around and trying to cuddle, and cuddle. those are emotional ties. Uh, I don't want them to you. So take me home after we finish doing what we're doing. Fuck off me, nigga. Yeah. Bad. Like, and if you at my crib, it's time for you to go. Oh, bro, I used to be so rude. Like, I had this one dude, and I mean, we still cool. We completely platonic now. But we, <laughs> I think I was a little rude. I might have fucked him up just a little bit. Because we were cool. We were really cool. Um, He was definitely that person that I would call to, like, <laughs> if I needed some service done. Yeah. <laughs> That was that was definitely the motherfucker I called. Like, come on through. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, but once I was done though, it'd be like, mm, oh shit. So uh, what you gotta do? Well, it's back. You gotta go to work. <laughs> you gotta leave. That man. was my favorite line. So what are you about to do? <laughs> <laughs> like, because I because uh, I'll never forget his face. And this this is when I had to have a conversation with him, make sure we were still on the same page because before it started, we were on the same page. So we needed to still be on the same page. So it yeah. was like I see his face, you know, got done, we chilling, you know, he wiping his mouth off and shit. Yeah, whatever. And um <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. So so what you about to do? And he was like, okay. man, really? Like, I thought we was going to at least kick it a little bit. You know, it's kind of late. Oh, yeah, it's late. So don't you want to go home and go to sleep? Don't you got to work in the morning? And then he just looked at me like, this bitch. <laughs> like, I would never forget because I felt bad. I mean, after I woke up and thought about it. Because once he left, I just went to sleep. And the guy was tired. The fuck? I just hey, came alive. Oh, I'm going to go, go right to sleep when you leave. <laughs> but the key word there was when you Come on now. Yeah, because shit, because now that you're gone, I'm about to take a shower, lay on this bed, but as naked, don't touch me. I'm feeling Hucking back. <laughs> I got to wash the little remnants of you all. Because now that yeah. I got what I wanted, I'm satisfied. Right. It's almost like, yeah, I'm good. What are you here for now? What's your name? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But, um, but then I had a con- at that time, I had a conversation with him, like, yo, you know, you know, we just, we kicking it, right? We ain't. Yeah, my boyfriend. You know that, right? <laughs> like I had this. <laughs> Excuse me. I already break it to you, but yeah, right. I, I meant that. And hence why they would always say, "You got a nigga mentality." And I, I used to hate that. Yes. Like, I'm a full I girl, think, like, but, but we can't help it. Fuck. However, we're gonna reclone <laughs> that phrase, and we're gonna say it is a female mentality because Come on now. we are now in the <laughs> age where we can speak up for ourselves sexually. Okay. Yeah. So fuck so, you. I ain't no nigga. I got a female mentality. Okay? Yeah. That's it. Uh, and we can wrap it up right on right there. All right. <laughs>